Hello guys, in this video, I'm going to show you the easiest way you can create a very realistic flood house. This time around, we're not going to be using the multi-text plugin from CG Source. I'm going to show you how you can do it using a Corona or your V-Ray if you're a V-Ray user. To get this plugin, the flood generator, just head over to the CG Source website. It is for free. So you can download it and there is a pro version as well. Okay, the difference between the free version and the pro version is that with the pro version, you can have access to more patterns, while the free version gives you access to only the standard pattern, okay? All right, now that we have downloaded the plugin that we need, which is the flood generator, let's go ahead and get this over with. Now, in the crate, you go over, usually this thing works with lines, or even plain, but let's use like a line that is closed, okay? So I'm just gonna draw five meters by five meters line, okay? So now that we've drawn the line, all I have to do is come over here and create my flow. I already added it to a button. There's a video that I did where I showed you how you can create this button. Um, plugins and modifier you use all the time. You can easily add them to this button and just go. Now when I come here and click on this, it is going to add it for me. But if you don't have yours here, you can just come over here inside the modifier list and type flow generator as fast as you can. As you can see, you can see it here. You can still click on it. This is where you select. Let's talk about what everything does very quickly. This is where you select the pattern. Okay, you select the pattern. I'm using the pro version, so you see I have access to more patterns. If you are using the free version, you are going to see only the standard. All right, don't you worry. Standard is what we are going to be talking about in this video because that is what you are going to be using most of the time anyway. So let me just make this viewport here big. Okay. So I'll select this. Um, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to make this like one, two. Uh, and this particular one, I'm going to make it 120. Okay. Over here in the grad length, I'm going to reduce it to zero. Hold on first. I want to quickly set this in the bevel. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I had to like make a quick adjustment. So now this is the max length. What does the max length do? The max length is what you use to adjust. Let me let me turn on the put it in clear mode so we'll be seeing it better. Okay, this max length is what you use to increase the 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 length. Okay, as you can see, it is becoming bigger. Now, when you have maximum length and minimum length, that means you are not going to have the same length of board. The length is going to be between the minimum length and the maximum length in this case going to be between 1000 and 2271.36 okay so that's what the minimum length does but I'm, I'm not going to do that i'm just going to have like one two here like that and then maximum width i'm going to leave it at um let me okay let me leave it at 150 no 120 now the minimum width does the same thing for you too you can use it to um, as you can see, make some of the boards smaller than others, as you can see. Well, I'm going to use only one width, which is 120mm. Now, the graph length is what you use to create, determine the gap between the boards. Okay, so if I should make it big, as you can see, we have a very big graph length now. I'm going to leave it at zero because this is going to be an interior, you know, floorboard. All right. So, um, in the minimum offset, minimum offset is what determines where these boards are located. If I put it at zero, you can see that all of them are aligned properly. Okay. It determines how the boards align. So if I make it 50, you see that the board, they meet each other halfway. You can see this, this one is meeting this one. This two is meeting themselves in the middle of this board while these two is meeting themselves in the middle of this board so um i'm just gonna leave it at um 30 
so that it will like be a little bit randomized. Let me make it 20. A little bit randomized and there's still an order to it because you can see something like a step going up, but I feel like it's better this way. Okay. You can also have a mass offset here where you can have like a randomized things going on over here. But I'm just going to leave it to minimum offset. Offset. All right. So the extrude is what gives the thickness to what you're doing. Let me show you. So it has, it is at 10 now. I can make it 20 and you see it will become bigger. And then the bevel is also to make it look more pronounced. Okay. When I come here, you see how it's looking. I didn't increase the extrusion. The extrusion is at 20. Let me make it 10 even. But when I increase this, you see that it keeps on coming up. So it chamfers the bevels, the edges to give it like, you know, a more pronounced, you know, gaps. All right. Depending on what you want to do. So I'm going to leave the extrude as 10 and I'm going to leave the bevel at, uh, Three. Okay. Yeah, three is cool. Three is fine. The rollout of variation per board. For us to be, I really, really appreciate what's going on there. Let's come over here the ground length and make it like um 200. Okay. I think 200 is actually even big. Let's make it 20. Uh, 50. Yeah. Something like this is cool. So the max rotation, if I increase it, you are going to notice, let me go to the top view. You are going to notice that the board will start to move. As you can see, it's moving. The minimum rotation is just like what we're what we're doing here. Now it is going to keep the rotation between, um, like right now, it's going to keep the rotation between 35 to 55. So and the minimum offset, if I rotate it, it is going to like move the boards out of their, let me go down, of their lines. Okay. You can see what it's doing. It's moving the walls out, the, the floors, the floorboards out of their line. The minimum offsets restricted to so, so, and so, like these other ones. Okay. Just that way. So, um, when you come over here, you will see another thing, the mouse tilt, the mouse tilt. This one tilts the boards in the Z axis. Okay. As you can see, see what it's doing now. Tilting the boards upwards this time around. You can also have the minimum tilt too. So let me just quickly make everything zero. Okay. Grant length also zero. Now in the general, you can scale this, this board. All right. I can scale it up. You can see it's becoming bigger. In the direction, you can tilt this board, so you can make it like 45 degrees. You can make it 135. Okay, so let me take it back to zero. That's what that does for you. Then in the in the offset, offset helps you move the board. Is it in the either in the x axis? or in the Y axis, okay? This load generator actually randomly map your maps for you, okay? It randomly maps your, your materials. When you bring in a lot of materials using the, maybe the multi-texture map, transition. So it randomly does it for you, but then I'm going to show you how you can actually do it using this Corona multi-map, okay? Or V-Ray, okay, if you use V-Ray, all right? So, um. You can save this preset so you can load it in later on when you need it. All right. So that's um, basically it over here. So I'm going to like open my material editor and I'm going to go to the maps. Under Corona, you're going to see the multi map. Okay. We have something like this under V-Ray too. When you go to V-Ray, you're going to see multi video multi subtext okay it's the same thing if you use video this is what you're going to be using okay you load the maps here but um for the purpose of this tutorial i'm going to be showing you how to do this using the corona map that's the corona multi map all right so but then we don't have what to load here okay usually we load um this type of map in here but if you don't have it and you have a normal type of wood texture is okay. Let's go over to the Photoshop so I can show you how to split it into tiny pieces so you can import it like this. All right. So this is a map I got from these people. Okay. Um, we have the diffuse map, we have the normal map, and we have the 
gloss map. Okay, so I'm going to show you how you're going to split this into pieces so you can import it. It's very simple, actually. All you have to do is select the splice tool, okay, and then you select the place you want to split, right click, and then divide slice. Okay, now I'm going to divide it into six. Let's just do six. You can do seven, you can do eight, depending on how many you want. So I'm going to divide mine into six, and I'm going to say okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to export this, and I say save for web. Okay, I will change this thing. I will change this from GIF, GIF to JPEG. Okay. All right. So I'm going to zoom out so that we'll be seeing everything. And I'll make sure that this is in maximum. And that is 100. Yeah, everything is at where they're supposed to be. So now I'm going to select all these and I'm going to save them. Okay, I'm going to create a new folder. And I'm going to call it multi text maps. Okay, now I'm going to just hit save. I'm going to do the same thing for the normal map. Now, when we are done, we are going to see them like this. This is albedo. That's the normal. That's the gloss. All right. So it's now time for us to like bring them in into this place. Okay. But before we do that, let's work with this material. So I'm going to like bring in. So I'm going to be using Corona Legacy, and then I'm going to apply this to it. Okay, over here, I'm going to make this one point six. Okay, yeah. And I'm going to apply this to our floorboard. You're not going to see it from here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start an interactive render. Okay, so we we'll appreciate what it is we are doing. Let me add a light source in this place. That's why we're not seeing anything. Okay. Let me make this smaller. Okay, yeah, as we can see, we just have one color, even though we are applying the multi-text. So how do we make this thing to have different like variations? Okay, so that we can be able to bring in, you can see the color of the of the materials inside the multi-map. We are supposed to be seeing all this color applied to this wood board, okay, the floorboard. So how do we do that? So you can do that by coming here to select the type of randomization you want. So if you select mesh elements, you can see that all the different materials that we have have been applied here. Let me reduce the, the brightness. You can see that they have been applied here. Okay. You can randomize it. Sorry. Let me, you can randomize it the more by using this seed. You can see when you increase the seed, it changes the randomization for you. Okay, you can try out other types. You can see this one is trying to add like different materials by the edges too. So just play around with this and figure out the one that works best for you. But for me, I'm going to be using the, the mesh. All right, let me just quickly go over here and turn off this. This. The noise in during render so we can have something a little bit crisp yeah so for us to bring in the map that we just created okay we have we'll plug this to the diffuse map we need to create two more and then we need to plug one to the reflective gloss and we need to plug the other one to the bump no hold on not to the bump i say create it put it into normal go to normal and then we'll now apply this normal to the bump. Okay. 
So to load in these textures, I'm going to click on this and I'm going to quickly go over to the multi text because that's where we saved it. And I'm going to select the albedos and I'm going to open. Okay. That will load it in for us. And as you can see, we're already having different textures. Okay. Looking nice already. Now for the gloss, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to load the textures and we're going to select all the gloss boards and then we'll hit open. Mm -hmm. Now for the normal map, we're just going to select, select the normals. I'm going to hit open. So let's go and um, make some modification to this. Okay. We can actually change the colors of this wood. We can actually edit it more. Okay, and how we do that is through the use of gather random, um, gamma random. So when we increase it, let's say I make it one, you are going to have like a different colors of the floorboard. Okay, and if I increase it more, you are going to see. Let me just zoom out a little bit. Okay, as you can see, you see the color the wood is taking. Okay, you can even do the same thing for the saturation random. Okay, when you increase it like that, you're going to see different colors. Okay, you can randomize this thing using the seed, as you can see. Okay, so the hue random does the same thing, but for coloring. All right. Yeah, so with this now, you can further more edit and uh, customize your floorboard the way you might want it to be. If you don't want anything, like if you don't want to edit it, it can just you know take everything back to zero like so okay and it will still be fine okay yeah so that's actually it for this video i hope you enjoyed it and if you did please give me a like and if you're new to this channel consider subscribing not only subscribing ring the notification bell so you don't miss any of our future tutorial thank you very much for watching this video i'll see you in the next one